No more copy pasting keyframes or relying on pre comps to play an animation multiple times in one scene. Here's how you can use timeline counters to trigger animations dynamically in Cavalry. For this video, I'll have the count target set to beat markers and the count mode set to trigger. However, if you want to use timeline markers, the information is the same, you just have to manually add the markers yourself. So here we have a scene with beat markers, an ellipse shape, and a timeline counter with count target set to beat markers and count mode set to trigger and the rest of the settings are at default. You can see here that the numbers in the count attribute are almost always at zero, but on the single frame that the beat marker crosses the playhead, it jumps to one. To help us see this better, let's connect the output of the timeline counter to the Y value of the ellipse. We will also need to add an expression on that connection, multiplying the input by 100, or else the ellipse will only move one pixel, which is kind of hard to see. Now we see that for a single frame, the ellipse's Y value jumps up 100 pixels, but this doesn't look very nice on its own. This is where we can start to adjust the convolution size. We see that as we increase the convolution size, the numbers in the count start to ease up to 1 and then ease back down to 0. This gives the ellipse a much smoother animation up and down. The convolution size increases the amount of frames it takes for the counter number to change. By default, the number in the convolution size attribute gets split evenly on each side of the beat marker, or time marker if you're using those. The convolution graph sets how the count attribute number animates. The vertical axis of the graph goes from 0 at the bottom to 1 at the top, and the horizontal axis of the graph goes from the beat or time marker minus half of the convolution size to the left to the beat or time marker plus half of the convolution size to the right, with the beat or time marker being in the center of the graph. So in this example, if the beat marker is on frame 24, the left side of the graph would represent frame 12 and the right side of the graph would represent frame 36. By default, the convolution graph has this nice ease up to the middle of the graph and ease back down. And we can see that this is what our ellipse is doing. 12 frames before the beat marker, it starts to ease upwards, with the peak being right on the beat marker, and then back down 12 frames after the beat marker. You can also change this graph to be whatever you want. So if we change it to a U-shaped graph, we see that any frames outside of the convolution window are at zero and as soon as it enters the convolution window 12 frames before the beat marker, it shoots up to 1, or 100 from the ellipse's perspective, because the left side of the graph starts at the top of the graph. It then eases down to 0, and then eases back up to 1, and then instantly drops down again to 0 once it gets outside of the convolution window. If we set the graph to a straight line from the lower left to the upper right, which is going from 0 to 1 over the length of the convolution size, we see that the ellipse moves from 0 to 100 in a linear fashion, and then instantly drops back down to 0. And of course, we can flip that graph, and it will go from 1 to 0 over the convolution size. Next, we can start to shift the convolution offset. Here we are setting it to minus 12, with 12 being half of the convolution size, and making it negative to push our window to the right so that it starts on the beat marker. At first glance, it can feel like negative and positive numbers have the opposite effect than you might expect, but just try to remember that negative numbers will push your window to the right, and positive numbers will push your window to the left. So, since the center of the graph is on the beat marker, if we offset it to negative half of the amount of the convolution size, the ellipse will start its movement on the beat marker. If you wanted the movement to be finished on the beat marker, then you would set the offset to positive half the amount of the convolution size. You can also use the offset to trigger the animation between markers however you like. Okay, so we can make a ball move up and down. That's great, but what if you want to do something more complex, like this? This is where animation control layers come into play. We know that the timeline counter trigger outputs a number from 0 to 1. So let's set our graph to a straight line from the bottom left to the top right, and then connect the timeline counter's output to a number range's value attribute with a source minimum of zero and a maximum of one and the minimum and maximum output values of zero and 100. Next, we connect the number range's output to an animation control that is connected to all layers that have animations. What this does is as our convolution range passes through the playhead, the animation control animates our layers from zero to 100. So with this character example, I've created a small dynamic animation where it reaches out for the star. I've connected the animation control to any attribute that has keyframes, and now this creature will reach out for the star, repeating that animation around every beat marker. I could also use custom timeline markers instead of beat markers if I wanted to have greater variation in the timing. Now go and make something using a timeline counter. 
Please like and subscribe if you find this content useful and comment down below what cavalry behavior you want me to make a video on next.